in this video I will be producing various different metallocenes. But before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, The Column. The Column is a free email newsletter about the chemical industry on a global scale. If that sounds interesting to you, be sure to check out the link in the description at the end of the video. So metallocenes are organometallic compounds that generally consist of two cyclopentadienide ions with a metal sandwich between them. There are many derivatives of metallocenes, but there aren't really any metallocenes that have a big purpose in chemistry or medicine, though they can be used to make other metal complexes or as a catalyst in some reactions. One metallocene, called ferrokene, was gaining attention as a potential anti-malaria medicine, but a recent study found that the effect didn't meet the standards to be considered a medicine, and it even cost 25% of the people to vomit within 6 hours of taking the medicine which likely even hindered uptake and recovery. Okay, so metallocene related compounds aren't found to be that useful yet, but they mostly just look funny and are usually colorful, so that's why I'm going to try to make some of them. The simplest metallocene is called ferrocene, which has an iron atom sandwich between the cyclopentadiene rings. Ferrocene is one of the few metallocenes that is actually stable in air, so to start off simple, I will first be making ferrocene. Afterward, I will try to make some more difficult metallocenes, like cobaltocene and manganocene, which are both air sensitive, and supposedly manganocene is thermochromic, so we'll see about that. Before I can start with the synthesis of ferrocene, I have to produce some fresh cyclopentadiene. Since cyclopentadiene is unstable, and two cyclopentadiene molecules easily undergo a Diels Alder reaction, we have to crack it from the product dicyclopentadiene. With strong heating, this molecule will fall apart back into two cyclopentadiene molecules. So to start off, I set up a flask and drop in a stir bar. Then I add 125 ml of dicyclopentadiene to the flask. I then build a fractional distillation setup. Since the dicyclopentadiene will start to boil during the cracking, I don't want it to come over into the receiving flask, but I do want the cyclopentadiene to come over. Luckily, the cyclopentadiene has a boiling point of only 41 C which means I can just add a fractional column to create a large enough temperature gradient so that the dicyclopentadiene will condense and fall back down while the cyclopentadiene can simply pass through into the condenser. Since the cyclopentadiene wants to turn back into dicyclopentadiene at room temperature, I add an ice bath under the receiving flask to prevent this as much as possible. Now to start the cracking process, I simply heat the mixture to a boil and wait for the cyclopentadiene to come over. After it had been running for a few hours, I collected enough in the receiving flask. So here we can see the remaining now yellow liquid on the left and on the right the fresh clear cyclopentadiene. For now, I will set it aside in the fridge and start preparing the next reactant for the ferrocene synthesis. So to make ferrocene, I need iron 2 chloride, but iron 2 chloride is quite unstable and oxidizes in air to iron 3 chloride. So to get around this, I will prepare iron 2 chloride in situ by mixing it with iron powder. So I add a mixture of iron powder and iron 3 chloride hexahydrate to a flask and add 20 milliliters of degas DMSO. While stirring, the iron 3 chloride will get reduced to iron 2 chloride and the iron will also form iron 2 chloride, according to the reaction shown. So now I just leave it to stir for a while and start the next step. To get a slightly better yield, I grind up some potassium hydroxide into a fine powder to increase its surface area. Then I add 20 grams of the powder to a flask and drop in a stir bar. I add a dropping funnel and a gas adapter and then attach an argon line to the setup. On top of the dropping funnel, I add another gas adapter and connect it to a gas washing bottle, which will prevent any air from getting into the setup. Now I add 50 ml of THF to the flask. I then stopper the flask which seals the setup completely and I start the argon flow to purge out all of the air. Now under continuous argon flow, I add in approximately 4.25 ml of freshly cracked cyclopentadiene. In this reaction, the KOH will deprotonate the cyclopentadiene and form the cyclopentadienide ion, which we can use to make ferrocene. So now that most of the iron has reacted with the iron 3 chloride and we have a solution of iron 2 chloride, I can now add it to the dropping funnel under argon flow. After adding all of the iron 2 chloride solution, there is still some iron powder and iron 3 chloride left that hasn't reacted, but since it was added in excess, it doesn't really matter. So now that the setup is complete 
and the reactants are ready, I can start the reaction. I open the dropping funnel and slowly drip in the iron 2 chloride solution. The reaction mixture quickly turns orange. And after everything was added and left to stir for a while, it turned almost black. So now I have ferrocene that is dissolved in the THF and DMSO mixture, along with some excess KOH, some formed KCL, and perhaps some unreacted stuff. So to get the ferrocene is relatively simple. Since ferrocene is insoluble in water, I can simply add it to a beaker filled with water. But to also destroy any remaining KOH, we need some acid. So in this case, I will add it to a 37% HCl solution, along with some ice cubes because the reaction is very exothermic. The present THF and DMSO are both miscible with water, while any KCL and iron salts will simply dissolve in the mixture. Meanwhile, the ferrocene precipitates out and can then be filtered off. So I added about 70 grams of ice to a beaker and approximately 60 milliliters of 37% HCl. Then to this mixture, I simply pour in all of the contents of the reaction mixture. I then stir it around and we can see the orange ferrocene precipitating out of the solution. I then wash the flask with some dilute HCl to get out all of the ferrocene. After getting everything out, I stir it again and let it sit for a second. Now the next step is to filter out the ferrocene, so I will simply use vacuum filtration. I wash the beaker a few times with some water and also wash the product on the filter with some more water. Afterward, I took out the filter with all of the ferrocene and scraped it all off into a crystallizing dish. Now this is the final yield of the bright orange ferrocene. To further purify it, I can do a sublimation. Since ferrocene sublimes readily, it can easily be purified that way. Unfortunately, I had a little accident while cleaning and spilled something into my dish, which destroyed part of my product. I was kind of forced to do the sublimation to purify it anyway. So I simply put everything into a beaker and put a cold flask on top. I then started heating the beaker. The ferrocene started subliming on the sides of the beaker and on the bottom of the flask. And it was then scraped off. So after that, I was left with some nice orange fluffy crystals. Now with this ferrocene, I want to try a reaction. I want to make ferrocenium tetrafluoroborate, which is a blue complex. Ferrocene can be oxidized to the cation ferrocenium and then complex with tetrafluoroborate. To try this out, I will do it in a simple way without exact amounts. So to a vial, I add a small amount of iron 3 chloride and dissolve it in some THF. Then to this solution, I add a bit of tetrafluoroboric acid and as the final ingredient, the freshly made ferrocene. When adding the ferrocene, it is immediately oxidized to the ferrocenium cation and then complexes with the tetrafluoroborate ion to form the blue complex ferrocenium tetrafluoroborate. This compound is used as a one electron oxidizing agent because the produced ferrocene in the reaction is pretty much inert and is easily separated. So moving on from the ferrocene, I also did this exact same procedure with tin 2 chloride to make stanocene, which is relatively air stable, though not completely. But it was a boring white color, so I will only give it two seconds in the spotlight. Now for the more sensitive metallocenes, I have to take a different approach. Since they can react with water or acids and are also air sensitive, I cannot use the same method. Therefore, I have to do everything fully without water and air. The first step is to prepare a solution of the cyclopentadienide ion again, but this time in its sodium salt form. To do that, I fill up a flask with 155 ml of THF. I drop in a stir bar and then add in 8.6 grams of sodium metal that I made in a previous video. I then attach a dropping funnel and a gas washing bottle. With the gas washing bottle, we again prevent air from destroying the product, but we can also track the progression of the reaction because hydrogen gas will be released. So to the dropping funnel, I add in about 31 ml of cyclopentadiene. I then slowly add it to the flask. In this reaction, the sodium metal will react with the cyclopentadiene to form the sodium cyclopentadienide salt. As the reaction progresses, the solution will take on a dark brown to red color. And we can track the production of the salt by seeing hydrogen gas bubble through the gas washing bottle. Since the surface area of the sodium pieces is quite small, it will take a while for the reaction to complete. After all of the cyclopentadiene is added, I remove the dropping funnel and connect the flask directly to the gas washing bottle. I then let it react until no more hydrogen is produced and all of the sodium is gone. 
So the next step is to dehydrate the metal salt that is used for the metallocene production. For cobaltocene, we use cobalt 2 chloride, but now it's in its hexahydrate form. So to remove all of the water and acquire anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride, I can attach it to a vacuum pump and heat it to 200 C. Tracking the progress is pretty simple, since anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride has a blue color. So I can simply wait until everything is completely blue and no more water vapor is seen. After a while, it looks like it is completely dry and I can move on with the next step, which is dissolving the salt. So I add a stir bar and then add about 20 ml of degassed and dried DMSO. I then allow it to mix for a while until no more solid is left at the bottom. Now that the preparation is finished, I can start the reaction. I use the same setup as the ferrocene synthesis and flush the whole apparatus with argon. I then use a syringe to take up about 25 ml of the sodium cyclopentadienide solution and inject it into the flask. Then to the dropping funnel, under argon overpressure, I simply pour in all of the cobalt to chloride solution and wash it once with some more DMSO. I then attach the upper part to a gas washing bottle to seal the whole apparatus. Then under constant argon flow, I slowly add the cobalt 2 chloride solution to the sodium cyclopentadienide solution. During this reaction we are producing the cobaltocene, which should be a dark purple. But because the solution is already dark, it is impossible to see if anything is produced. When everything is added, I quickly remove the dropping funnel and put a stopper in its place. I then leave it to stir overnight. Now that it is finished, I took the setup apart and started adding N-hexane to the flask. Since the mixture contains salts, I tried to knock them out by adding hexane, while keeping the cobaltocene dissolved. I attached some balloons to the flask to equalize the pressure, and I added more hexane. When enough hexane had been added, I tried to take up only the top part of the mixture, so as to not take up any precipitated salts. I then inject it into another argon flush flask and repeat the whole process a few times. After that was done, we should now have a mixture of hexane, THF and cobaltocene, and maybe also some DMSO that came along. Though it is immiscible with hexane, it is miscible with THF. Now hopefully I can simply boil off all of the solvent under a vacuum and I should then be left with the cobaltocene. After pretty much all of the solvent had been boiled off, we can see a very dark purple solid left behind in the flask, which should be the cobaltocene. And when I accidentally let air into the setup, it gets destroyed. Okay, so at least we see the dark purple product and see that the air destroys it, which makes me pretty sure that it is cobaltocene. I was thinking of doing a vacuum sublimation with a cold finger, but that didn't arrive on time, so I guess we just have to admire it from the flask. I also did another run where I followed literature a little better and dissolved the cobalt salt into THF instead of DMSO, since any DMSO present in the end is hard to boil off. I also put it into the reaction flask first this time and put the sodium cyclopentadienide solution in the dropping funnel. After that was done, I instantly set it up for a distillation. In literature, they mention boiling off all of the solvent and then taking up the cobaltocene into hexane and crystallizing from there. But it didn't really work out. And honestly, I just need a cold finger to properly purify it. I also tried the exact same procedure with manganocene, which is a brown solid that turns pink at high temperatures. But it's looking a little messy and without a cold finger, it's not gonna look any better. I think the synthesis of both compounds went fine, it's just very annoying to purify it without a cold finger. Maybe in the future I will do a revisit and do a vacuum sublimation to get some nice crystals. Anyhow, that is it for this video. I'm expecting my next video to come out in about 1-2 to two weeks. As usual, thanks to my patrons, and if you'd also like to support me in making videos, please follow the link in the description. See ya!